Hey, Jared here from soundguitarlessons.com. This is a very quick video that I just want to uh, show you so I can share a resource with you that uh, recently a student in one of my courses turned me on to. It's a website called realbook.site and it's just an awesome publicly available website with a ton of music on it and there's a lot of ways we can use it to practice uh, to benefit from it and there's ways that I've been using it and practicing with it and I want to share those with you here today. It's called realbook.site because um, it is kind of an online website version of the real book. If you don't know what the real book is, it's a fat book of lead sheets of mostly jazz standards that jazz musicians widely use to learn and play songs and, and fake their way through songs. And in fact, the real book is a play on words for what used to be called a fake book, which was a collection of uh, sheet music that just shows the chord symbols and the melody notation, and that's all. And so if you didn't know a song, you could use this lead sheet to fake your way through the song at a gig or something. And so a bunch of these and having them ready to go was called a fake book. And now the real book is widely used and it's a play on words uh, from the original source called the fake book. And I think also it's called the real book because it's actually legitimized and uh, it's not breaking any copyright law and you can actually buy one. Uh, but this website, on the other hand, I do not know if this is legal <laughs> that it's up, but for now it's up and it's extremely useful. And I think it has aspects to it that are even better than playing with the real book because there's some interactive things that we can do with it. So let's talk about how we can benefit from this. First of all, you see that it's just, uh, very simple and a bunch of tunes. If we click on anything, it's gonna take us to the sheet music, it shows the notation and the chord symbols. That's what a lead sheet is and it's online. And if it has lyrics, there's lyrics down here, which I'll talk about uh, a little bit later in the video. But let me just walk through kind of several ways that you can obviously practice with this. If I go to the tune confirmation, the Charlie Parker tune, um, I like to practice reading on uh, Charlie Parker tunes or like bebop tunes because there's so many notes. And if you're interested in reading at all, then this resource is fantastic. And I recommend diving into practicing reading just note for note for note. And I have a video all about uh, my approach for how to do that. So I will link to that video in the description for you. But to sh give you the short of it here, I would just go note for note, find it, find it, find it, find it in one position on the guitar. And you do that uh, enough and you'll start to speed up your ability to find certain notes. Uh, more on that in the video in the description, but obviously you can use this like crazy to practice your note reading um, on the guitar. And there's an extra aspect of that that I'll share in just a second. Obviously another great thing you can do is practice your comping through the chords, which is what we would do on any you know, working with any lead sheet. And if you don't know how to play any chord on the fly, like ready to go, then definitely get used to playing shell voicings first. So you have a chord type out of very few options, physically speaking for, for shapes, you have a chord type you can get to for a correct, accurate chord anytime. One of my most popular videos on my channel is about shell voicing. So I'll link to that in the description if you wanna go deeper, but you can practice your F major seven, E minor seven flat five, A seven, D minor seven, C minor seven, F seven, B flat seven. That four and oh three thing is very uh, odd. I have not seen that before, so I just ignored it. G seven. So make sure you can play through the chords, whether it's shell voicings or something else. And then an obvious thing you can do from there is record or loop your own playing. I'm gonna loop the shell voicings here. C minor seven, F seven, B flat seven. Lots of changes in this, which is great to practice with. G seven, G minor, C seven, back to F. And then now you're obviously can practice your improvisation over it. And if you need to take a step back and work on just playing chord tones, then that's a great way to work on improvisation. Chord tone improvisation is kind of like the shell voicings version of single note improvisation. And I have a couple videos all about that. I'll link to at least one of them in the description so you can work on that from the ground up if you want to. Uh, with a lot of changes like this, it sounds very accurate in navigating the harmony. F, D minor, C minor, F7, B flat seven, D seven, G seven.
added a couple notes there in the end, but you can hear how just with even only chord tones, it sounds like it's really navigating the harmony well. And then you can kind of do anything you want after you get that skill down. So uh, a great thing to practice here. But a feature of this, I'm going to jump to another tune that I just um, had ready to go for you here. Georgia on my mind. I love working on just classic tunes um, and tunes that have lyrics. And uh, But let's say that you are wanting to play this and you got your chord shapes down and everything and you want to play this for uh, accompanying a singer maybe. But maybe the singer needs to be in a different key. Well, this is a huge uh, feature of this website. This alone can make it feel like, oh, this is why it's worth, to, worth it to work here uh, because the real the real book on the on the page you're not going to be able to uh, change the key though it's an excellent skill to be able to transpose or you obviously want to actually internalize and memorize songs songs you really want a part of your repertoire you should be memor memorizing them internalizing them practicing them in multiple keys but if in a pinch or if you just want to work on something and learn it in a different key you can flip around and play this now in a different key Played a wrong note there, but that's okay. Uh, but very cool. You could that could be a, an extension of your reading where you practice reading the same thing in a different key and a different key. Um, I added a sharp where there was not a sharp, <laughs> but worked out okay. And kind of was doing a bit of a chord melody too. Let me jump to another tune. This is Misty. Um, I did a video about making a chord melody arrangement of this tune. So I like to flip through these tunes and just go note for note and say, what would the chord melody arrangement be even on the fly? And this is the arrangement that I did in uh, one of my YouTube videos that I'll link to in the description. So you can work through little by little, any tune you want, any key you want, and work on your reading, the chord shapes, the chord melody is obviously doing all of that at once. And then also sometimes on this website, they have um, versions of the tunes posted, like this Johnny Mathis version of um, Misty, which is just absolutely gorgeous. If you haven't listened to that version of uh, Misty, definitely soak that in. Um, it's absolutely beautiful. And then uh, I mentioned the lyrics, and I just want to say here, uh, this is really useful that the lyrics are here also, because I've learned a lot of tunes from lead sheets and recordings and stuff too from instrumental recordings, which by the way, also side tip, definitely be learning off of recordings as well. Like use all the resources you want, but don't, don't neglect learning from real recordings, real music, real musicians, and internalizing, memorizing all that stuff. But still a resource like this is fantastic. But if a tune has lyrics, even a tune like this, where the lyrics were written after the original song was, um, it is amazingly beneficial to know the lyrics, even if you can't sing, like try to match the lyrics with knowing the melody. It just helps. I wish I did it for, for years before I started doing that because I can track the melody much better. I can remember it longer if I have the lyrics attached to it. It just feels more like a song. So the lyrics are here. You can work on the melody, work on the actually knowing the lyrics, and it's all kind of here um, in front of you. So that's all. I just wanted to share that resource with you. If you uh, don't know how to play uh, any chord voicing on the fly from a resource like this or a real book or anything, then you should download my free booklet that is called the Any Jazz Chord Method Booklet uh, that has exactly the chord shapes you need to be able to play any chord as it comes up, the shell voicing version of it, the simplest version of the chord. It's, a, it's an accurate and complete sounding harmony, and it only takes eight chord shapes to be able to do that. And I have the booklet with all the shapes written out for you and exactly how to use it and how to practice with it and everything. So if you want that resource, it's totally free. There is a link in the top of the description, or you can go to soundguitarlessons.com slash any jazz chord to get that. And I'll also send you a link to the video that explains it as well. But the book is self-explanatory and just really great to use and practice with. I had a student 
email me and say, hey, your any jazz chord method totally works. I'm playing gigs now with a bass player and a singer, and I'm just only playing those shell voicings. And because of that method, I can play any chord that comes up. And we're playing gigs at like nice restaurants and stuff. And all I need to know is those, and it's feeling great. He even sent me a video of them playing, and it sounded really good. So it's it's a actual useful in the real world kind of method. So get that if you want to. I post a new lesson video every week. Hope to see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Take care and happy practicing.